welcome to the Duke Liberty Show. This is Duke Liberty coming to you live. Doing a nice little live chat here. Hopefully you're doing well. Figured I would <coughs> do a live chat. I haven't done one in a couple days. And, uh, you know, excited to have you back. Hopefully you're here on this good Thursday night on Friday Eve, right? Figured I would read a little bit of excerpt from a good book that I like to read. This is, I was talking about this earlier. This is the Doomsday Warrior book, right? So figured I'd kind of read a little bit of excerpt from that and go from there, have a little bit of fun. It is 100 years in the future. An all-out nuclear war has killed two-thirds of the world's population. The Russians were able to get off many more missiles in the first strikes that were victorious over the United States. Now, the control they control virtually the entire world except for China, and they ruthlessly rule the people's world social republics. Place. Atomic bombs exploded all over the planet, but primarily in the United States. The United States lost 100 million people within one hour of the attack. Another 75 million died within a year. The Russians immediately moved in with mass, massive transports of troops and weaponry, quickly took control of much of the country. They built 40 fortresses in virtual part in vital parts of the United States. Huge military complexes from which they set out search and destroy units of tanks, helicopters, and radiated suited troops to extinguish the still burning embers of resistance. The Russians used the American citizens as slave labor, forcing them to grow crops and to work in factories. The Russian High command lives in luxury. The officers have taken the best housing in remaining cities. The American workers must do with shabby shanty towns around the fortress complexes. 35 million Americans are directly under the red rule. Sullen and docile, they carry out the Russian master's orders, but underneath they hate them. They pray for the day with the legendary Ted Roxon. The ultimate American will come with the free fighting and the free fighters from the hidden cities and release them from their bondage. Environment. A great number of bombs set off and altered the Earth's axis. The polar caps began melting and the forested regions turned to desert. As the world slowly warmed, the higher amount of CO2 in the air created a greenhouse effect. Lakes, rivers, and streams had dried up in many places. Ecology had almost been dealt, uh, e ecologically, it had almost been dealt a death blow from the war. 90% of the earth species and plants of animals were now extinct. The east coast of the United States, it, United States is still extremely radioactive. Vast, bare plains stretch hundreds of miles in New York, Connecticut, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania, where nothing grows. At the edge of these hot zones are forests of mutated bushes, Trees covered with thorns, rock-hardened bark. Parts of the Midwest were spared by the Russians' plans for eventually using that for farmland to grow. Crops for their own clamoring masses back home. But the soil is nonetheless too radioactive for anything but weeds. American slave labor has been taken out by the truckload to work turning the soil in the medium-hot zones, meaning death within a year from handling the rocks and topsoil. Still hot enough to send a Geiger counter off the edge. The far west was hit hard. Colorado, Colorado was spared mostly because of bad aim, but further on in Utah, Nevada, and California had been hit heavily. The area is now misty, unknown land. Uh, nothing is known to even live there. Volcanoes and earthquakes have become common for much of the northwest and has been turned into a nightmare of craters some miles wide. The South was hit in a haphazard fashion, as if the Russians hadn't quite know what to strike. Some states, New Mexico, Georgia, were almost untouched. Others, Florida, Texas, had been blasted into bits. Large parts of Florida were gone. Where Orlando and Tampa once stood is now a great jagged hydrogen bomb created canal, stretching hundreds of miles across the interior, filled with red, muddy water. Slowly, life tries to come back from its surface of the rift from the savage land. Many forces have expanded 
over the last century where the United States once stood. In other places, desert covered the earth for four or five hundred miles in every direction. The hidden free cities, nearly 75 towns, have sprung up, sprung up in the last hundred years, hidden in caves, mountains, and deep woods and valleys, located on the edge of hot zones, where the Russian troops are reluctant to enter. These towns, known as free cities, are made up of armed resistance fighters. Each city consists of anywhere from 1,000 to 40,000 people. They are fiercely democratic, using their own meetings to discuss and vote on issues. To free Americans, the free Americans who have been bred out of the country far away from the Russian-dominated clean areas have been, though through natural selection, become ten times more resilient to radiation from their ancestors. They are bred tough, with weak children placed out into 20 below degree nights. If a child lives, he is allowed to develop. If not, he is put out of his misery now. Ted Roxon fights out of Century City, one of the more advanced free cities in the manufacturing labors of the Liberator rifle, used by the freedom fighters everywhere. They attack Russian convoys, blow up bridges, but they plan for the day where they can begin an all-out assault on the invaders. So that's just a little bit of the book I'm reading. Obviously, it goes into a whole lot more, but it's a super cool, like, doomsday, you know, alternate history book. So I really dig that kind of stuff. Again, this is just coming from the Doomsday Warrior, kind of a setup for the whole book. I dig that kind of stuff a lot. I know it's kind of goofy. I understand that it's, it's like 80s, you know, the 80s, uh, you know, action hero movies. They're over the top. This book is over the top. But it's really neat. It, goes, it has like 20 books. They're like the little serial books. I think this, these were found like in the grocery store and stuff or in like comic shops. But I really like it. And uh, really good read. Uh, I read them in high school. And, uh, you know, I think I reread them again after high school. And I really enjoyed it. And uh, I might read them again. I got almost all of them, I think, still. So I dig that kind of stuff. Uh, Fiend Dog, what's up, man? Tomcat941, what's up? Warhammer, good to see you. Uh, Dino, what's up, man? What's up, Duke? Binge watching Fallout on Amazon. It's really good. I My wife was just asking me about it if I knew that it was on. I'm, I'm going to watch it. I'd like to know what you think about it, though, for sure. Because um, I do plan on watching that show as well. Um as a big Fallout player. I didn't really play Fallout 76. I got it when it came out. I played it once or twice and then never touched it again because it was so buggy and I hated it. And it made me really mad um, to think what they did to Fallout. So I'm hoping that they really fix things um, the next time that comes out with a new Fallout game because I cannot stand that stuff. So I hope that it... uh. Like I said, it works itself out because I'm not in it for uh, bad gameplay. Um, you literally have the best story ever. Why the why you wouldn't um, just take things like, I don't know, Fallout New Vegas and do Fallout New Vegas Part 2 and pick up right where the story ended. My gosh, how, how why, why is that not done? I don't know why that's not done. That is like the like the Fallout New Vegas is one of the best video games ever made in my opinion. It has a ton of bugs and has a ton of faults because it wasn't even finished correctly. But I still love it. And Fallout 3 is really good. Fallout 3 is dark and um, gloomy and weird and creepy. But I, I that's another really good game. Those two games together are really, really good. I hope they do well with the uh, with the show. I mean, that's a, that's hot right now, right? Apocalyptic world ending things are, are hot. So uh, I hope that they get their their stuff together with that because that would be fun, fun, fun. Uh, Practical Bacon Duke, what's up, man? Uh, Tomcat nine four story time with Duke. Yeah, just reading a little bit from the Doomsday Warrior. Uh, I kind of dig that stuff. Like I said. Um, on this cold, rainy night. Did a little bit of work in the garage. Like I said, very little work in the garage. Um, and, 
now it's just uh, hanging out. It's Thursday night. I got the weekend off. I got all weekends off now, so I'm happy. Uh, I did order some paints for uh, my Warhammer stuff, so I'm excited about that. Because I'll probably be painting this weekend in the evening um, is my plan. So I got a ton of stuff to paint. I've got a whole bunch of Riders of Rohan to paint. Well, I'm going to phrase that. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Two, four, six. Seven Riders of Rohan. 24 Rohan Warriors. High Elves. i got two sets of the Fellowship to paint. Bunch of stuff. And a ton, a ton, a ton of orcs. So, I guess, um, we'll see how it goes. Let me see, I guess I can kind of show this around. Yeah, I got a bunch of orcs here that I need to get done. But, yeah, man. Yes, Anonymous, I am a nerd. This is true. This is very true. I am a nerd. Um, but, yeah, other than that, just hanging out, you know. So, um, oh, I did get, I have my meeting I've been so busy. I, I finally, um, um, I finally got a hold of my local gun shop. I got to go. I paid the rest of my can fee and I'm got a meeting tomorrow because my my can came in. I never went up there and finished the paperwork, so I got to finish that. But I'm hoping that'll go quick, so we'll do that probably. I got a, a, a thing scheduled tomorrow at at 10. Finish that up, and then it's hopefully figure out from there. Uh, oh, Duke, I want to say don't do a spinoff channel when it comes to your Warhammer and Lord of the Rings stuff. If people don't like them, if they don't like it, F them. This is Duke Nation, baby. Oh, thanks, man. That means a lot. Um, yeah, uh, that's right. It is Duke Nation. This is what we're doing, baby. Um, I'll probably separate. You're right, though. You're absolutely right. I'll do whatever I want on the channel uh, because this is my channel. So you're right. You're, you, you are right about that, Dino. Um, we're going to have different chats for different things. This is more the gun and SHTF. I just was talking about just general updates. But you're right. I'll do whatever I want. Uh, you know, But I don't think... I don't think anybody really gets... I think people just give me a hard time. Like, Hunonymous is just making fun of me because that's fun um, to make fun of me. So I'm not mad about that. But I think, um, you know, it's a... I've dedicated my more of this time in the community that we have here is more, uh, obviously, more gun and SHTF oriented. Orient, or, you know, orientated. And that's fine. Uh, I just am going to still do stuff on the side to try to gather people up here but that's a weird that's a weird channel you're you're right it's a kind of a weird channel to have lord of the rings warhammer and and 40k and then uh guns and shtf but i mean hey it's just it's me so uh, i don't know yeah i i'm gonna go do that uh Other than that, I don't think we're too much. I think we're going to might. Oh, I agree. If others don't want to see that stuff, they don't have to watch. Yeah, man, I will not let me know. Man, it won't. It will not let me know when you go live anymore. Yeah, dude. Yeah, I'm stuck at like 1100. It's super crazy. I'm at 1100 subs. I've been at 1100 subs for like three weeks now. And that's never happened where I just stay the same. I'll get like one or two a day. You know what I mean? Like that's, that's kind of normal. Um, and I've completely stopped, and that is pretty sure I know why that is, which is fine. I, I, we will continue with this, and uh, we will grow with with people, with you telling people about me or or people finding me or something like that, but that's fine. We'll figure it out together, uh, regardless of what they're, they, they, they do. Uh, don't worry, I am a nerd. Yeah, I know, that's why I, I figured, my dude. Uh... And what's even more messed up is when you don't even look at your Discord and read my messages. Uh, I get all your live notifications, EL762. Oh, good. Um, I hope you do, yeah. I was hoping everybody did. Uh, 
But that's okay. Either way, we're having fun. I'm enjoying this. Uh, I'd like to go shooting soon. I'd like to shoot... I've been a, 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 um, I'd like to do a video uh, of, of shooting. I shot the 9mm uh, AR. Loved it. I'm going to be honest with you. I loved it way more than I thought I'd love it. I fell right in love with a, a 9mm AR. And I shot the 5.56 AR. Both of them, that the, the uppers that Dino sent me. And uh, not real sure if I, how I want to do shooting videos. I just went out and shot and I was with my wife. And uh, we're, I'm going to see if she'll do a chat with me either tomorrow night or Saturday night. Uh, my son is going to his cousin's on Saturday night for the first time. He's going to spend the night. He's, he asked if he could spend the night. So his mom thinks I'll have to go pick him up around 8. And I think she may be right in some ways. But I think he's going to surprise us. I think he's just going to be fine. I think he's going to get out there and stay and, uh, and do a do, do and be 100% fine. I don't think he's going to need us. Um, I think he's going to be super happy to be with his cousin. And, uh, and his, he loves his cousin and his aunt and uncle and, and his, his other cousins. There's, there's multiple cousins there. So he's going to be in a, in a world of happiness. So I think he, I think he'll be fine. Um, uh, did you run that nine millimeter can on the nine millimeter combo? I don't have my can yet. I got to go uh, finish some, the last bit of paperwork and then wait for it, which is I'm I'm fine. But I did pay for it tonight. Uh, I paid the rest of it that I owed on it, which I thought I was gonna have more time, but I just I paid it off. Um, so that's exciting, and I'll have it hopefully soon. Um, I'm thinking about running a, maybe a nine mil combo now. That's a possibility, in my opinion. Uh, but there are some practical applications to 9mm now, and I believe that. And I think there's a lot of reasons for those. But I, I think that with it comes SHTF. Um, I'm, like, so close to listing. As they're talking to Dino and everybody here, I am so close to listing, like real close to listing my a my AKs, uh, and being done with uh, having something for nostalgic reasons, or well, you got to have an AK because you got to have an AK. Uh, I'm like done with that, and I just want to be like 100% ready, ready with some things. So I'm not exactly sure exactly what that's going to look like, but if I could get decent prices on them. And I would buy, I'd probably buy, sold all my AKs. I could buy like two ARs. L as in Spanish, L O L O L seven six two. Um, I'll probably buy like two ARs and then just dump everything else in, in ammo, like straight up ammo. Duke, if you get a CMMG MKGS lower for that upper, it'll run Glock mags. Then your pis then your pistol and that will make the same mag. Oh, see that's cool. I'm gonna I'm gonna copy that. Um, I almost sold all my AKs too, but man, I got a crap load of ammo. So there they sit. Yeah, see that L seven L. That's dude. That's exactly what I have a problem with. And Dino's right though. Dino brings up good points with it when he argues with me, he tries to convince me. He brings up solid points I can't argue with. <laughs> Practical big. I got eight dollars right now. Yeah, all right. Um, he brings up practical points. I like the AK. I just. I don't know. The eight, it's over. It's over, man. The age of the AK is over when it comes to prepping. So, I'm not going to buy any more ammo. It's like having a Mauser. Like you're just going to shoot it for fun. 
Fallout series on Amazon pulls from Fallout 3, 4, and New Vegas. Easter eggs on all of them. Oh, I'm sure, man. Um, yeah, man, I want to build uh, just Glock mags. I just got to sell some stuff to get it. Yeah. Go Tactical Porsche Club. Yeah, I, I got to. I might sell some more stuff um, and kind of curb the. Uh, tailor the. the collection. I think I need more cans. I definitely want to just get more ammo. But I think after I get this can, I get start running with it. Um, I keep one for sure. It's a Draco ISBR before braces were a thing. Big thanks to Dino. You will all hear in my chat. AK's 1911s I view as maybe I have one for nostalgia. Uh, but don't need to really invest in those systems. Yeah, I might sell everything but one. That's probably what I'm going to do. That's probably what I'll do is I'll, I'll sell everything but one and then go from there and and see what I want to do for, you know, buying something um, with that money. Anonymous, part of me wishes I was there with my SKSs, but I like them and they're not hurting anything just sitting here. Yeah, I get that. I sold mine in COVID and made decent money and bought an AR and a shotgun and an ammo and I was kind of I don't regret it at all I don't I may I mean I don't I just don't regret it uh I never really shot it that much it had a place at a time and it passed and I got a really cool old school Bushmaster and I was ha I'm really happy with that. And I bought a shotgun that I really like. It's a nice little Maverick 88 shotgun that's a pump. That's kind of tactied out a little bit that I like. And then I bought a bunch of ammo with it. So, you know, that none of that none of that makes me sad. All of that makes me happy. And uh, so that's how I look at it when it comes to that kind of stuff. But you know, what are you really going to look at down the road? So, I'm trying to think what else. Uh, Dino, I got your messages on those those houses uh, that land up there. I'm going to take a look at that. That looks pretty cool. Um, we're going to... We're going to go to Independent City. I think it's called Independent City. In Michigan later this year we're gonna go up there where it's like a cabin set um, where there's it's like a, a private they say it's like a private resort but what all it is is it's it's three cabins on one property on the water and like my parents are going to get a cabin to themselves. My sister, her husband, and their my nephew will get a cabin, and then we will have a cabin with our kids. And it's all on one little plot of land. And there's a fireplace, or like a fire, like a like a fire pit in the middle of them, and then there's a access to the little pot, the the lake out there, and it's got like three boats you can pick up and take out at any time you want. And then the owners like live in the front of the property. And, uh, and they're there to like help you if you need something and they're really cool people, but we have a really good time out there. We stayed out there last year and, uh, I had some like weird ear thing going on. Um, so I was a little bit miserable. I had to fight through it, but I like had my ears all plugged up. I had some weird, crazy, couldn't hear sickness going on um so i'm hoping this year i'll be all healthy and able to enjoy uh this time because it was it was a really cool place and so my kids it's like where you can sit on the 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 big hill and or the the big deck and just watch them play and not have to be um like worried about them going in the water because you can be right there and enjoy and sit and uh have a good time so we'll look forward to that uh, I like SKSs more than most people, though. Yeah, I mean, if, and that's, if that's your thing, then keep them. You know what I mean? I got stuff like that. Uh, 
And if you like them and you can run them good, I, I, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with having those guns. I just, I just got to a point where I was done collecting stuff that wasn't going to ever serve me a purpose. And you, you can say that SKS will serve you a purpose. Um, especially if it's something that you really like. Like, I like my AKs. I like one of them. Um, you know. But we'll see. Um, can we watch your ceiling fan? Yeah, right. Uh, I got nothing else you to look at. I'm cleaning up in here a little bit. Got some cool stuff. But, you know, just hanging out. That's the big thing. Uh, talking about all kinds of good stuff, but mostly, you know, ARs, AKs. I'm trying to figure out where I'll put my can on. I'd like to put it on like an M4, like AR, FN, maybe. I might put it on a PSA. Eleven and a half inch AR. Probably what I'll do. Trick that out. Maybe get a... Maybe, you know, do something like that. Get that all tricked out and ready to rock and roll and go from there. That's probably what I'll do. Um, but we'll see. Uh, I'm going to have it on my problem. My, whatever I... Whatever my, you know... I Right now my, you know, bed gun is the... Is the FN military classic M4 with a hollow sun on it and then flip up sights with a light. I got a, I finally got a light on that bad boy. I'll have to do a video on that with a light on it. And I got my sling and I'll put a can on that because I won't want to blow my ears out. So look forward to that. It's probably what I'll put it on. I still want to get a 22 can and for my 10 22 or give it or put it, you know, or, you know, for my 1022, and I really, I still want to get like a Ruger Mark IV or five. Those, even those newer ones, I don't know what they're what exactly they're called, but those newer Rugers that are semi-automatic that you can put suppressors on that look super cool. I would uh, really be into that, to be honest. Um, but we will see what I choose to go down the road next with. Um, Still, we'll probably want to be looking at a couple more ARs before the year ends. Um, just to be very honest with, you know, I, I'm concerned about what this... It's so weird. This world is so weird right now. Politically, everything this place is, this, this world is weird. I just, I don't know, I don't get it. It's like we're in this, like, apathetic mode. Um, uh, no link, LOL. I'll send you one, LOL. No, I am i can't. Uh, I don't know how to send one on Facebook Live or uh, YouTube Live. Because uh, I usually do it from the, from the actual stream yard. And I'm not using StreamYard, so I don't, I'll have to figure out how to send you a link on here. Once I do, I'll be happy to send you a link. Uh, the newest is Mark IV, and that's the one I'd get. It has one button takedown, so much better for, than the Mark III. Yeah, that's exactly what I do. Yeah, I'm sorry, man. I don't mean I'm not trying to skip you. I'm just saying I don't I don't know how to do it on here. And uh, yeah, man. But, uh, 15, 20 years ago, I went through phases. I was big on Millsurps, then cowboy action stuff, double and single shot shotguns. Then I got heavy into prepping and utilitarian aspects and sold a lot. Yeah, I, I sold a lot of my, like, old collections of stuff to get more tactical. I was super Millsurp, super collector, you know. I remember when I wouldn't even own a nine millimeter i had 45 and a couple other things and you know pistols and 45s and 357 and 38 but i would 
when I carry nine millimeter, it was funny. I was, you know, before the awakening, before the understanding of reality. But we all had that time, you know, the dark time, the before times. But that's okay. But uh, hopefully you got something going on this weekend for yourself or you got something you're excited about. Uh, I do. I do. I, I'm be, I'll be honest. I, I'm pretty excited about this weekend. I don't know exactly what we're going to do, but know some fun family time. Having the weekend off is good, like I said. Um, I don't know. We shall see. I'm trying to figure out. I got a uh, one of those gun cabinets somebody gave me. Uh, you know those old gun cabinets that hold like, uh, I don't know, it looks like it holds four guns. Four guns with a glass case. It's about five feet tall. Maybe, maybe almost six foot tall, really. I'm trying to figure out what to do with it. I don't have a bunch of room in the house. It's in the garage right now. I don't know what to do with it. I don't really want to stick four guns in it in its glass, but I don't know, I kind of, I took it and I shouldn't have took it. Because, you know, a family member gave it to me, so now I feel like I'm obligated to use it, but I don't, it's going to take up too much room. It's got a nice little key lock on it, but, you know, that's to keep little hands out, not, you know, that's only going to last so long. You know. That's when people only had four guns, you know. They had you know, 30 out six, a 12 gauge, and a 22, and you know maybe a you know lever action gun or something. They had like one pistol they put in the back of it or something. That was about it, you know. That's when people, all, everybody had four guns. Um, so I have a little bit more than four guns, maybe. I'm not gonna exactly tell you it may be five but that's really you know some of it what it is on that end of the aspect of the of the gun I'd like to know in the comments or the live chat um, what's your next gun you're looking at because I'm in a weird place where I have everything covered and I uh, I do want to just focus on ammo but I gotta have something I'm looking forward to. And it, for a minute there, it was the MMP5, like a legit one, semi auto. But we'll see where that, you know, that takes us. But things definitely seem weird and apathetic. And I mean that like across the country, like everything. I don't know if we're being, like, I feel. Like we're all dumbed down and dulled down. That the passion is gone and the passion for living and and I don't mean just existing. Because there's so many people that just choose to exist. They don't really live. And I've been thinking about it a lot. I don't know if it's because I've been thinking about my mortality or knowing that this is this is gonna end someday. And as I look at my my life and look at look back at things you know when that dark day comes you know am I going to be happy or sad and somebody said something about like the worst nightmare ever is your your current self meeting your potential self so that potential that you have in you that self ever was ever to meet you your current self like what would that be like I was like oh my gosh it's kind of rough, man. Another 22, maybe Winchester Wildcat. That's cool. Need to finish my current AR build. Then a 4570 lever gun is hopefully my next. A really nice rifle length AR is my next gun, I think. Or a SIG 365 XL. Uh, my wife carried the 365, the 365 XL, and then another 365. So, very impressed with that gun. It's not my taste in gun but I can surely appreciate it for what it is and tell you that that is a really good gun and that 
you would do well to have it and it's it's a it, it would it's only going to benefit you um overall so i would suggest that you know that's a, a really good gun to get i saw somebody getting a gun oh my gosh they're getting a a ruger lc lcr yeah and i'm like you know why why would you you get that you know that's always my thing i just think that's a, such a a stupid gun that you would get in 2024 when there's a plethora of other things um <laughs> Wife said, I can't buy any more guns after getting 11 this year. Man, we're in, uh, we are in May, my dude. That makes me super happy. Uh, 11 this year, so they could get in a motorcycle or another motorcycle. Um, I, I still think that's funny. Do you know? I wish we got to get, we got to get together. We got to get a little meetup. We got to do like a Duke Liberty meetup if you're in the area. Do like a breakfast and guns or something like that in the area. We could meet somewhere. In the middle, there's a bunch. There's a couple of us here that are live within driving range, and even if I got to drive a couple hours, it'd be worth it to sit down with some folks and have a meal, and then go do a range or something, or go do like something fun, like a maybe like a hike, like just a nice little hike or like a you know an evening. That'd be something crazy. A nice little hike or something would be cool. I'd love that. Something out in the woods. Like Duke Liberty Nation hike or something. That'd be cool. We'll do like a campfire. See, I dig that kind of stuff. Like I... The summer... Before I went into the Marines. Which was my senior year. Like, I graduated. And I... My grandpa took me... I think it was Beaver Island in Michigan. I got to look it up. We took a boat. We backpacked every, everything, water, everything, water, food, everything we needed. We backpacked to uh, you know, to the ship. I think it was Traverse City. And then the boat takes you to the island and drops you off, and you're just free. And you roam around the island until you find a place to camp, and the boat comes every two days. Every other day, and, and like for the week or something, and it picks you up on the island. And if you're there at 12 o'clock, you get on the boat and you go. Or if you don't, then you're SOL and you're waiting two more days. But man, I had a blast with my grandpa. We got there. There was like only other another two people that were gonna get off the island, and they were going on the north end, and we think we were gonna go to the southern end, and we just picked like the highest point we could find, and stayed on this big like cliff in some thicket of trees and a clearing, and it was so much fun to build a fire, to get camp set up. And to just talk and it was so much fun. I'd like to do it with my son someday, soon. Probably wait a year or two, you know. He'd probably do it fine now. Probably don't need to wait. He'd probably do it with him. He would have so much fun doing that. It would be a really good time doing it too. But anyways, I uh, always remember that. It was good. We stayed, I can remember hearing the water and the waves at night, right on the, right on the crest of the hill. So, um, Trying not to buy new guns, focusing money on quality of life, investment, spending money, take care of your body is important. That's good, John Nelson. That's very, that's a very good way of thinking about things. Midwest Meetup, yeah, Practical Bacon Midwest Meetup. We would invite people that are on Matt's channel, I guess. <laughs> Got to be in the Indiana, though. I don't set foot in the People's Republic of Michigan. <laughs> Anonymous, that's funny. 
We could carpool anonymous, LOL. Yeah, I think it'd be fun. It'd be fun to do like a Midwest meetup. Anybody who's in the area and wants to meet up from, you know, all the gun channels or something like that would be kind of neat. I think that would be a fun time and could be fruitful. Maybe we'll look for like a gun show or something at that end of the state or something. Something cool. Because I think you could do gun shows between Michigan and Indiana if you're residents. So maybe if there's a gun show in the area, we could all meet up there and do a dinner or something. That'd be kind of funny. Even if we just did something like that would be a good time. Uh, we should be organizing other things like pro-gun rallies and meetups and doing stuff like that in a positive light. But we shall see. Well, it is 8.59. I've gone on for 41 minutes. And we've got a chat. Uh, our friend is going to do a chat here. Uh, I don't know if I'll be able to join him. I'm going to try and join him. I am uh, going to be out here doing some stuff, so I might try and join him and have some fun. But we're going to go ahead and end this. We're going to do a chat tomorrow night as well um, after I get some more cleaning done in the garage. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time doing that, and then we'll get back to another chat. You guys have a great night. This is Duke Liberty signing off, and we'll see you tomorrow.